Do you ever get caught up rehashing the past, overplaying those if-only scenarios in your head over and over again, wishing you'd done something that you hadn't done, thinking about one thought over and over and over and over, replaying that scene over and over and over and finding that you're getting frustrated, that you're getting tired, that you're getting upset, maybe flat, maybe depressed. Well, that's called overthinking or spiraling into overthinking and so many people battle with that. It's really a very common thing. Some research coming out of Michigan University, Michigan University showed that 73% and probably more are between the 25 to 35-year-olds battle with this and 52% of 45 to 55-year-olds battle with that. And I'm 60 and so I'm out of both of those statistics. Maybe mine's 100%. Anyway, basically it's common. It's really, really common and it's really, really bad for us because it, Thoughts, as we know, are made of memories, they're alive, they're dynamic, they're in your mind, brain, body network, they are driving you. And if you are feeding something, whatever you think about is growing the most. So if you keep on rehashing, you're not actually moving forward, you're actually just getting, making it worse and increasing that driving force that will just drive you even more crazy and increase your mental health problems. And that can happen thinking and also journaling. And this is why journaling has got to be done in, in, in the right way as well. If you journal in the wrong way, if you just write and write and write and write and write and keep rehashing the same thing over and over and over, week after week, month after month, and just keep saying the same problem over and over, it's just as bad as the thinking part. And in fact, it can really, really break you down mentally and cause a lot of problems and can lead to extremely challenging and dangerous mental health situations. So... It's really important that we understand how to manage this. I'm going to give you three tips today to help you to start getting this under control. And you can apply this in the thinking realm and in the writing realm. And you use the neurocycle around this. Okay, so basically, just a couple of points. Research shows us that people seem to think that rehashing thought helps. So thinking it over and over, people think it helps, but it's not. Because what you're doing is you're making the toxic tree bigger and bigger and bigger. You're making that hedge bigger and bigger and bigger. You're making those toxic clouds bigger and bigger and bigger. That ne and that network then is driving you even more forcefully and you can feel like you're losing control. And you can get so stuck in that messiness that your messy mind gets entangled inside the messy brain and messy body and it's really hard to see around the corner and to see the light. So it definitely does not help rehashing in your mind and rehashing on paper, okay? Research also shows that this is a reality that changes are it's because our mind, brain, and body are plastic. Our brain and body are plastic, and our mind is changing our brain and our body. The reality is that you actually are weakening your physical brain and body and increasing your chance of being more vulnerable to illnesses as well. So physical illnesses. You also reduce things like your creativity. And we need creativity. Creativity is linked to our intelligence. It's linked to a sense of peace and happiness. So the creativity gets drained. You also get physically drained because it's such a negative, draining activity. It's like having so many things open on your cell phone and or being at the gym and not taking rest, correct rest in between. You drain the battery, you drain your muscles, you drain your mind, brain, body network. And as soon as you start feeling that level of drained energy, you can then start feeling depressed and flat and anxious. And then it spirals. And then you can go from one thing to the next and down the rabbit hole and then suddenly everything's terrible. It's like a viral effect. It just like spreads. It's like a wildfire, not a wildfire effect, okay? So also another thing research shows that when you do the spiraling overthinking thing, you're less likely to take action because there are too many options. You get into this analysis paralysis. You just keep on and on and on and on analyzing and you don't take action. And this is where a lot of people with mental health challenges can feel like they don't have any choices. Because if you get into this analysis paralysis, if you keep on rehashing with it's writing, talking, both, you feel like you don't have any options. You feel like you're not moving forward. You feel stuck. You feel like you've got no choice because you get so stuck in the tangled dark tree that you can't see all the light and the beautiful trees around you. Also, if you get stuck, you don't, uh, if you get stuck in potential consequences, that won't happen. So you, 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 you see all these consequences. And you start making up things that are negative and negative. One negative thing is breeding another negative thing, and they may not even happen. And the other thing is, if you don't try, if you get into that analysis, paralysis, writing, thinking, or both, 
it, it leads to like lack of action. So you don't try. And we need to try and fail in order to learn and repair and grow. We have to fail. Failure is good. Failure is how we learn. It's what are you learning what not to do. And if we take that out of our life, we don't grow forward. We just get stuck. And this is so common with mental health problems and can lead to really severe suicidal ideation and on the extreme end as well. You're much less creative. In, in order to be creative, we need to switch off to the external and switch onto the internal, have those thinker moments, activate the default mode network, calm down the other areas of the brain, calm down the other areas of the body, get our neurophysiology under control, and then we can get creative and we can get that mind and body network really searching through all of our huge forests of memories. And that doesn't happen if we constantly get stuck in just one area. You're just stuck in one area and you can't see the wood for the trees, literally. Energy levels drop, sleep gets affected, appetite gets affected, all kinds of things. Well, I can relate. I know we've all done this. And so here are three tips that work for me, that work for my patients, that are scientific and that are really helpful. The first one is to reconceptualize. The second one is to create a worry journal. And the third one is to practice specific gratitude. There's a lot more, but these are three fantastic ones that can get you going. So I'm just going to give you three today. I'll give you more another time. Okay, first thing, reconceptualize. That is seeing things in a different way. And this is what I talk about all the time with the neurocycle. So in reconceptualizing, what you want to do is you want to acknowledge the negative aspects. So do not be toxically positive. Do not try and send good vibes. Do not try and do all of that stuff and just try and swap out the negative and, and, and try and squish the negative down with a positive thought. You can't just swap a negative thought for a positive thought. You've got to deconstruct and reconstruct. And that's the whole process of reconceptualization. So you want to acknowledge the negative aspects. That's why you do the gather awareness and reflect. And then you want to get to that and get that all out in, in, in the metacog, the third step. Then you want to look, and I'm reading here because I want to say this properly. You want to look for the benefits or the things that you can change about it. So you get it out and then you look at that and look at the, you know, the benefits or what can you change about it. So for example, I was complaining so much recently and I caught myself going on and on and on about, I don't want to travel anymore and I'm so tired of traveling because I've been traveling 75% of the week for so many years and I've got so much to do and blah, blah, blah. So moan, moan, moan. And going around and around and got myself really worked out. So going through this process of reconceptualizing, I, and this is just a simple, sort of simple example, but I can reconceptualize and say, hey, I get to see the world. I get to travel with my family. I get to meet new people. I get to spend more time with my husband. I get to work on plannings. It's a very constructive time for me. I can get lots done or I can read a great book and relax because no one can phone me. And if I don't put Wi-Fi on, no one can text me. I can make an effort to have more fun, which will give me more energy. So applying those principles has shifted my perspective on traveling. This is a really simple example. But I've now got a new thought pattern that I'm wiring in and I'm practicing that. And that becomes my ability to choose to, as I start doing that, to start getting out of this back part of the, the forest and start seeing the other side and to start getting a, a, another perspective on it. So it's reconceptualizing through the neuro cycle, seeing it in a different way, learning, failing, and, and um, trying something. If it doesn't work, try something else. All those principles that I, uh, that I was mentioning earlier on, you know, what are, in reconceptualizing, we allow ourselves to fail. We allow ourselves not to just work on all these potential negative consequences but reconceptualize that that could be negative but that could be positive and that could be something beneficial not getting mad if it doesn't work with that saying okay well, what doesn't what didn't work so what doesn't work what have I learned that doesn't work so what can I do how can I do it differently this reconceptualizing allows that okay they create a, a worry metacog journal this is an amazing tool so just get a journal you can get one on my on my page, drleaf.com, this, you can get a medical journal, get any journal, doesn't have to be that. And then just have it as your worry, as your overthinking, spiraling, worry journal, whatever. And as something comes up, write it down in, in the medical form and just blast whatever comes to mind. Put it all down and then close it for 24 hours. So let's say someone sends you an email that freaks you out or a text that freaks you out or says something to you. Put that down and don't respond for at least 24 hours. Look, if you have to respond within a couple of hours, at least give it an hour. And if it has to be quite soon, at least give it 60 to 90 seconds. But preferably try and put that down if it's and, and in the journal and then give yourself 24 hours at least if you can. That's that's really great. But at least, if, you know, if you can't, a few hours at least. And keep that journal because there's things that, that then when you go back to it the next day, then you can add to that metacog and you can see 
what you didn't see when you were in the midst of that chaos. You didn't, this 24 hours is giving you a chance to move out of that cluster of entangled branches and see something differently and then you can write that down and then that can help you reorganize and how the work out what you're going to text back or email back or say back or what you're going to do. And then as you keep this journal, I mean, you could keep it in your phone, you could do something in your phone so it's in your notes section or something, but it could get quite big. So it's, if you're going to metacog, it's better to actually do it in a, in a, on paper and the writing out also helps to just really process. So that's really a good way. And then also as you go through, you'll find that stuff from previous worries that you'd reconceptualized, you can then use for a future worry that comes up or a future spiral, so overthinking spiral. Then third thing, practice specific gratitude. We all know that gratitude helps. We all know that it, there's so much research out there showing that it helps your brain, your body, your network, your heart. It allows the electromagnetic field of the heart to generate a healthy field and secrete, helps us to secrete A and F from the heart, which is a, a hormone that helps to calm you down. It does amazing different things. But if you just do the same old general gratitude journal daily, it becomes a chore and it doesn't have the same effect. So be specific in your in your gratitude. So instead of saying, I'm thankful for my I'm great, grateful for my heal, I'm healed, or I'm grateful because I'm healthy today. Rather be or I'm grateful for the love of my husband. Say something specific like I am so grateful for the fact that my husband Matt brings me breakfast and coffee in bed every single day and we've been married for 36 years. That's specific. Get specific and do something different every day. So it's not just the same thing over and over. Don't make it a road thing. Be specific. Really think out of a, out a detail. I'm, I'm grateful for just redecorated one of my rooms in my condo and it's all pink and white stripes. I, it's just every time I look at it, I'm grateful for the beauty that it brings me. So in conclusion, three really effective, simple tips to help you not overthink yourself into a spiraled volcanic eruption. Like volcanoes will erupt, overthinking will create volcanic eruptions in you that can create tremendous damage. But if you manage the eruption and you actively proactively prevent the eruption, you can actually then get the volcano dormant and you can move forward. So those three things are reconceptualize, create a worry medical journal and practice specific gratitude. I do this all the time. It's such a godsend. I hope this helps you. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.